The front of the X-43 and the leading edges of the tail are made of carbon carbon, a lightweight and strong composite material that can withstand extremely high temperatures. Carbon carbon that we use is sort of a high-tech cousin to carbon fiber. It's, uh, the, the carbon itself is different. It's, it's a much higher temperature. The bonding agent is much higher temperature. It's good to 3,000 degrees without degrading. It doesn't wear away. What you see is the front end of the vehicle, the tungsten nose. Uh, the very front edge is the carbon-carbon leading edge that provides the thermal protection. As you can see, there's a lot of complicated uh, machinery and uh, very densely packed systems inside this vehicle in order to make it work. A number of small electric motors on the aircraft are controlled by computer signals from the ground. Two motors on these electric actuators move the surfaces. That's how we maintain control of the vehicle in flight. Keeping the fuel burning inside the engine at supersonic speeds has been described as trying to keep a match lit in a hurricane. The flame doesn't really blow out because there are areas in the engine, small areas that aren't supersonic, that allow a flame to grab hold and to sustain itself. There's something about flying that fast that I think just captures the imagination of, of folks. Uh, it's just phenomenal to imagine flying that fast. I'd say the main interest you find for the scramjet in the near term would be the military. They would like to have a missile that goes, say, Mach 5, Mach 6, 5 or 6 times the speed of sound, so it can get to a target very quickly and has a lot of range in doing that. You can do that now with a solid rocket motor, but it runs out of gas pretty quickly. The Air Force is also interested in using scramjet propulsion for super-fast bombers that could strike anywhere in the world with amazing speed flying more than 10 times as fast as current bombers. There's no reason that a uh, human couldn't pilot or, or be a passenger on a hypersonic airplane. Vision vehicles, as we call them, include uh, space access vehicles to take uh, astronauts to the space station or to, uh, to orbit, and also potentially passenger vehicles, again, to take people uh, to the other side of the world. Some experts believe the scramjet could usher in a whole new era in aviation. We entered the 19th century moving at six miles an hour, the speed of an animal-drawn vehicle. We entered the 20th century moving at 60 miles an hour, the speed of a steam locomotive. We entered the 21st century at 600 miles an hour, the speed of an intercontinental jet airliner. And if you plot this in semi-logarithmic fashion, you get a nice straight line that indicates we may well enter the next century at 6,000 miles an hour, which is precisely where you see the X-43 really pointing us and heading in that direction. The X-43 scramjet is carrying on a tradition of cutting-edge aircraft development that goes back decades. And although Mach 7 is a major accomplishment for an air-breathing jet engine, rocket-powered planes were flying almost that fast decades ago. It all began with the most amazing series of extreme aircraft in aviation history. They were called the X-Planes.